Hello, everyone. I think uh, it's time. So I would like to start the workshop, uh, 2021 Kane Summer Workshop. So uh, this workshop will be a, uh, is uh, regarding the neuroimaging of nuclear medicine and especially uh, dedicated for radiopharmaceuticals for Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> and this uh, lecture workshop will be uh, somewhat a precursor for our upcoming lecture series in the fall semester. And regarding the schedules and other information about the uh, uh, upcoming sessions, I will uh, uh, introduce after this workshop. And before the lecture, I would like to thank everyone who attended, although it's a corona crisis and wish everyone good health. So I will start with my introduction for this workshop. Uh, so Alzheimer's disease is, as you will well know, is a neurodegenerative disease that usually starts slowly and progressively worsens. It, is the cause of 60 to 70, which is the most common cause of dementia. And the most common early symptoms is difficulty in recent memory. Uh, your... Yeah, difficulty in recent memory. And as the disease advances, problems with language disorientation or mood swings loss of motivation, self-neglect can happen. Uh, and as of 2015, uh, there were approximately 30 million people worldwide with Alzheimer's disease and among which is like 50 million of all forms of dementia. And as you can see from the figure that prevalence in the Asian region, region is high. And it is reported that the number of people with dementia in the region is estimated to be 23 million, uh, which is almost the half of the entire world, world in 2015. And it is estimated to increase to almost 70 million by 2050. Currently, there are a paradigm, paradigm shift in the disease classification system. So before showing the newly uh, proposed uh, paradigm of the diagnosis, we, I would like to introduce some what was in the past. So in the past, National Institute of Neurological and Communicative Disorders and Stroke and the Alzheimer's Disease and Related Disorder Association, which is uh, NIM, CDS, ADR, DA, proposed a criteria in 1984, which is like 30 years ago. And here, uh, the Alzheimer's disease was defined as a clinical and pathologic entity, which means that if a person have a gradual onset of cognitive, cognitive disorder, usually the memory, and it, if it led to a impairment in daily activity, the person would be labeled as they are having a dementia uh, clinically. And once other potential contributing factors had like other like uh, vascular dementia has been ruled out, a degenerative disorder then can be labeled. So here, the patient can be labeled as a possible or probable Alzheimer's disease. And this disorder could only be labeled as a definite Alzheimer's disease when the person went on to have an autopsy and at the post-mortem examination. And if the brain in this autopsy, the brain shows a neurotic plaques and neuroviral tangles. So in only this case, the patient can be labeled as a definite Alzheimer's disease according to this criteria. Uh, 
This conceptualization stood for like over 30 years and became so well accepted that the clinical diagnosis of possible or probable Alzheimer's disease was typically shortened to known to be just a Alzheimer's disease. So the clinical diagnosis has become equal to the disease process in much of like our medical communities and in the general public. However, there are problems when using this kind of conceptualization. Like since numerous studies have shown that elderly, there are elderly cognitively unimpaired person who has a numerous neurotic plaques or and the neurofibrillar tangles as the autopsy. And conversely, people with the clinical picture of probable AD do not have the defining features of such a plaque on the post-mortem examination. And furthermore, some awkward problems for some recent randomized controlled trials showed that like up to 10 to 30% of patients enrolled in the clinical trials for amyloid targeted therapy actually failed to have amyloid clocks on the PET scanning. So at this same period, the biomarkers for the Alzheimer's disease was evolving. Uh, and the biomarker reflecting underlying amyloid and tau have been available for 35 years which is particularly from the CSF. However, using the CSF based, uh, this biomarkers have some limitations for wide use because of uh, great laboratory to laboratory variability. And because it is actually somewhat a, uh, it needs a lumbar puncture, which has a resistance by the patient. So in, there has been need for imaging. And in 2004, uh, from the Dr. Krunk group working in Pittsburgh with his colleagues from Uppsala, Sweden, demonstrated a utility of C11 PET radioligon, which is known to be the Pittsburgh compound B, PIB. And, to, and it showed that it can identify amyloid clocks in living person. And this PET imaging changed the field as dramatically. So clinical profile coupled with this amyloid positivity on PET scan strongly suggested the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. And from there, the randomized controlled trial for amyloid targeted drugs now are in using, adopting this, uh, adopting this PET imaging to see the presence of amyloid in their studies. So starting from the PIB, several fluorine 18 based compounds named as fluorobetapyr, fluorometamor, and fluorobetaben have been developed and received a US FDA or EMA approval. And in Korea, there is additional drugs uh, named uh, Proroconor, which is uh, the market name Arzaview is an agent, which also had acquired approval in Korea. So now there are four uh, uh, commercially available amyloid imaging agents, uh, which have gotten the approval either in FDA or EMA or Korean FDA. So these are some, uh, some known facts, how the amyloid uh, accumulations are seen in the Alzheimer's disease patients. So at first, the most prevalent part for the visualization of the amyloid plaques are in the frontal cortex and precuneous areas. And following, there is a uptake, will be an uptake in the primary sensory or motor cortex and medial temporal cortexes. And at the later stage, there will be an uptake in the pons and cerebellum. So I'll, I will show you an example of a image. So, as you can see at the left side, 
you can see that there is a diffuse uptake and the uptake of the cortex and white matter cannot be distinguished. However, as you can see the right side image, you can distinguish the uptake in the white matter and the gray matter, which, which means that the, the amyloid plot deposition is, not, is negative in this right side image. So we can interpret this left image as a positive for amyloid image and right for the negative. And there are, uh, so for the pro beta band, we have adopted a brain amyloid plot load scoring system, which is known as the buffer scoring system. And it uses a predefined three grade scoring system, as you can see in the table. And these measurements are made by the physician according to the following criteria. So we give, uh, both whether this uh, scan is positive and ne or negative, and also we give them the score. So this is some summary of uh, various uh, amyloid imaging agents that are currently being used in the clinical practice. And from the development of PIB in 2004, because with the numerous study using this uh, amyloid imaging agent, they are getting a consolidating their position as a biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. So because of uh, the bands of uh, such a biomarkers led to a revision of the Alzheimer's disease criteria in 2011. And so firstly, the clinical continuum uh, was divided into the Alzheimer's disease continuum was divided into three phases, beginning with the preclinical state. And in here, the persons have like underlying pathologic features of amyloid deposition and neurodegeneration, but were actually, if the patient were clinically unimpaired, they were positioned as a preclinical state. And the MCI state is the myocognitive impairment state is individuals with a subtle decline in the cognition which preserves function in daily activities. And the final stage will be the dementia. And these uh, classifications were coupled with various combinations of biomarkers uh, and the present of these uh, common biomarkers like presence of amyloid and neurodegeneration can, could give a confidence that the underlying clinical syndrome was likely due to AD pathology. So for more specific example, as you can see in MCI due to AD, if a person, patient, Firstly, should have a clinical syndrome of the MCI itself. And next, with various combinations of biomarkers for amyloid and neurodegeneration, the possibility of the Alzheimer's disease being the underlying etiology of this dementia, the cognitive impairment increase. So when there is both measure of amyloid and neurodegeneration, if it is positive, then the, there can be a diagnostic category can be labeled as MCI due to AD with a high likelihood. And this high likelihood is given by the combination of these biomarkers. And this, is, this was the main point of the revised criteria in 2011. <clears throat> and from 2011, uh, the studies, there has again further evolution in thinking about biomarkers. So imaging to autopsy comparison studies have established that this amyloid PET imaging is, can be a valid in vivo surrogate for the art, art, uh, amyloid beta deposit. So it is now 
widely accepted that this amyloid imaging can be a indicator of the pathologic state, which means that this amyloid imaging can be used as a non-invasive pathology of amyloid beta deposition. So, but again, syndrome is not an etiology, but it's a rather a clinical consequence of one or more diseases. So a biological definition of Alzheimer's disease is a logical step toward greater understanding of mechanism underlying its clinical ex expression. So like, as you can think, for example, cancer is diagnosed by the pathologic result, not by the clinical symptom. So an additional development of PET ligands for tau has actually accelerated this new conceptuation of using the biomarker. And in 2018, so the NIA, NIAA recommended a research framework of a no, uh, new uh, diagnostic concept. Before introducing this new concept, I would like to introduce about the tau, tau imaging. The tau is a postal protein involved in the stabilization of microtubules and they are natively unfolded. However, in some uh, pathologic states, this, uh, there forms a neurofibroid tangles and it is aggregate of the hyperposporylated tau protein that are mostly that are the commonly known a primary biomarkers for the Alzheimer's disease. And tau PET is uh, relatively a new modality and the ligands that have been evaluated to date are considered as a first generation compound. However, these first generation compounds suffer uh, from some limitations, which the most commonly known are the off-target binding. Uh, however, autoradiographic studies have shown that the fluorotau sphere have like a good specificity to tau filament. So as a result, currently there is a uh, flow tau sphere has been the first FDA approved tau agent to be used in the clinic. And in the tau imaging, what you can see is that there is a elevated uh, tau binding in both media temporal lobe structures and uh, neocortex is strongly associated with positive amyloid PET scans and with clinical impairment across the normal aging to dementia clinical spectrum. And the uptake, as you will know, is this flow tau spear uptake was correlated with the Brock staging of the neurofibrary tangle stage. And the importance of the tau imaging is actually shown from the study that this study showed that the prospective, uh, show prospective longitudinal atrophy in Alzheimer's disease correlates with the intensity and topography of baseline tau PET, but not the amyloid PET. So what it means is that it demonstrates that tau pathology is a major driver of local neurodegeneration and highlights the relevance of tau PET as a precision medicine tool to help predict individual patient like progression. And also it implicates that it can be used in the future clinical trial. So briefly, it shows that tau accumulations correlate can predict the neuronal loss. And one, uh, furthermore, uh, this study showed that underlying clinical phenotype was 
phenotype of the Alzheimer's disease was associated with the regional distribution of the tau pet this, uh, agent. So in the typical AD group, high uptake was observed in bilaterally in the posterior cingulate, uh, precuneus, lateral temporal parietal occipital cortex, and medial temporal cortical which is actually consistent with the Brock stage five. And however, in such a atypical Alzheimer's disease, uh, the, this tau pet has a different uh, special distribution associated with the clinical symptoms. So for instance, like this <clears throat> PCA, which is posterior cortical atrophy patient, Tau uptake was more prominent in the occipital parietal and occipital temporal visual association areas. And this magnitude of cortical atrophy was also strongly correlated with the magnitude of the tau imaging, but this atrophy was not actually related with the PIB imaging, which is uh, a similar result from the previous studies. Before moving on to tau testes, there are <clears throat> six isoforms, uh, in, which is divided into two functional groups based on the number of its repeat, which is 3R and 4R tau. And, and this 3R tau, <clears throat> or 4R tau have different expression pattern in tau passes. And so this is one of the characteristic traits to differentiate primary tau passes by identifying the 3R or 4R tau aggregates. So for example, in the brains of Alzheimer's disease, both 3R and 4R aggregates are founded. However, in the PS like progressive supranuclear palsy, mainly the 4R tau accumula accumulations are seen. But in the PICS disease, the 3R tau aggregates are mostly found. And so far, the PET imaging with this first generation tau tracers like PHK families and a the flow tau sphere have shown the regional patterns in this tau imaging can discriminate a relatively in a good, it can do a relatively good discrim, discrimination from the healthy volunteers. However, there are problems given the fact that many of the regions of interest in these like uh, cortical basal disorders and PSP largely actually uh, has a same areas showing off off-target binding, especially the monoamine oxidase, oxidase B, the MAO B. And since this MAO B expression is high in the basal ganglia, the high uptake in such areas of this THK families or flow, uh, flow tau sphere can be uh, confusing whether this is due to the off-target binding or whether it is due to a pathologic state. And more, so there is a wide overlap in these regions. And furthermore, the, this first generation tau pet tracers, although we think of them as they are very specific to tau itself, However, these, their specificity is actually based on the structure of the tau beta shit. So they can effectively detect 3R, 4R tau helical structure in the brain. However, it cannot actually, it has a weak binding to the 3R and, or 4R tau itself. So <clears throat> it can be hard to detect such a primary tau passes using the first generation tau pet tracer. So there were, in an attempt to overcome these limitations, there 
second generation Tao pets are in the early stages of development and evaluation. And there is a optimism, as you can see that from here, that these, uh, these can actually, some of the limitations of these first generation compounds can be overcome in this next generation Tau pet. And so, for example, like as you can see, uh, PI2620 is a drug developed jointly by the Life Molecular Imaging and AC Immune. It is a, and it is known to be a drug that can bind to 3R and 4R specifically. And so according to and the last year JAMA Neurology, they announced that using this PI second generation tau pet imaging, these pets agents can be used for differential diagnosis of the primary tau pesi. So now, then what will be the next uh, tau tracer? And I think this will be a interesting uh, subject that you might be uh, have in mind. So uh, now it is possible to detect the presence of the defining neuropathologic features of Alzheimer's disease, which is the amyloid and tau in a living person using the imaging. So the new Alzheimer's disease framework proposal posits that the term Alzheimer's disease to be restricted to persons who have demonstrated the presence of neuritic plaques and neurofibrary tangles. So importantly, the description of the Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's pathology change are independent of the clinical status of the person, meaning that Alzheimer's disease dis description is no longer a clinical diagnosis, but a biomarker-based diagnosis. So there is a paradigm shift from symptom-based diagnosis to a biomarker-based diagnosis. So neuroimaging in nuclear medicine is gaining interest more. Moreover, these change in the concept is anticipated that this framework will substanti substantially improve the design of a randomized controlled trials for Alzheimer's disease. And many of the current therapies under development and in the current uh, randomized controlled trials are targeting amyloid or tau. And this new, uh, proposed framework and the concept will enhance their ability to enroll the appropriate participant patient and follow biologically relevant biomarkers during the course of treatment. So for example, you will have heard about the aducanuma, which is, which is the first FDA approved targeting agent for the Alzheimer's disease. And this uh, approval was based on two phase three studies. Although the study result is con has some controversial results, like the first emerge study have shown that there was a uh, effect at, by, in the clinical status. However, in the engaged study, the, uh, they showed that there was no difference in both groups compared to the both groups in placebo and uh, aducanumab group. However, what was uh, commonly shown from these two studies were, was that this aducanumab can actually reduce the amyloid plaque level in the patient and which was actually defined by the amyloid imaging. So as you can see, the SUVR in the amyloid PET imaging have decreased after applying this atukanuma uh, therapy. So this was also uh, adopted 
to evaluate the efficacy. So although in, there is a controversial of uh, the clinical outcome, it seemingly it have seen in a commonly show that it can reduce the clock deposition in the patient. So it had gained the approval by the FDA. However, still, they are actually limited to a patient with mild MCI or mild dementia. And one more thing is that in the FDA label, what you can see from this aducanumab drug is that there is some concern that the PET imaging, amyloid PET imaging is not required actually in the FDA label, but, but where else the MRI is actually, they indicate that it should be pro done prior to initiating therapy and it should be done at the follow-up to recognize some adverse e effects of this amyloid uh, targeted therapy. So there is some uh, debate or con controversy whether this amyloid PET is requirement for this drug. Still, uh, regardless of such a controversy, to actually define a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, now the amyloid PET and tau PET is, uh, is, has been and is used as a essential tool so regardless of such a indication in the label, there is a importance for doing amyloid neuroimaging in the Alzheimer's disease right now in nuclear medicine. And there are somewhat new, uh, uh, some concerns also about the blood or CSS markers because blood biomarkers are more uh, maybe a cheap or effective and easy uh, biomarker that can be acquired from the patient. So there has been concern that whether these blood biomarkers can substitute such a imaging biomarker. However, uh, in two ways, I think it, there is, uh, there is still a importance of the imaging. The first plea is that because of the numerous studies that amyloid PET is already established, has a established role as a non-invasive pathology. But more impo importantly, this imaging can show a special temporal patterns of the amyloid or tau deposition. And Actually, more importantly, importantly for tau deposition, actually these special patterns, as you have seen, are related with the Alzheimer's disease subtype or the like or other. It can be used for the differential diagnosis of tau pesis. So for the summary, uh, there is currently a change in the a uh, paradigm shift in the Alzheimer's disease diagnosis system from the symptom base to the biomarker base, which is known to be the ATN. And amyloid PET from the numerous studies have gained its usage as a non-invasive pathology. And studies have shown that there is a high correlation between tau accumulation and the clinical symptoms. And more importantly, the special distribution of tau is associated with the Alzheimer's disease subtype and also can be used for the differential diagnosis of uh, primary tau pesky. Okay, I think this will be the end of the first uh, introduction for this workshop. And do you have any uh, questions or comments? Okay, if there is no, uh, we can have some discussion later on. And before moving, we can have five minute break and let's 
uh, meet back at 40, and uh, Professor Yoon Sang Lee will uh, introduce us about the radio pharmaceutical uh, for the Alzheimer's disease. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, hello everyone. This is Yoon Sang Lee at uh, Seoul National University Hospital. I'm so happy to see you again. Uh, today, uh, uh, can you hear me properly? Yes, we can. Okay. Before start my uh, presentation, uh, uh, Bali Mandara uh, asked to maybe Professor Saw. Can nuclear medicine be used to treat Alzheimer's and dementia? <laughs> Can you answer that? Uh, how do you think, <laughs> Professor? Actually, uh, firstly, uh, importantly, we can guide the treatment and to pick up by the image and pick up the patient who will be the best participant for the treatment uh, as a uh, companion diagnostic. But regarding the treatment itself, uh, when restricted to the radiation effect, uh, there are some, I think, uh, recent, uh, recent attempt to see whether these like low dose radiation can may have an effect in a treatment of uh, neurodegenerative disorder. However, I think it's uh, uh, rel relatively in the preliminary stage, so more uh, studies uh, should be regarded to give a clear conclusion for that. So I think as a companion diagnostic, it has, a, it has already established as a role, but for the treatment itself, I think more studies are needed in right now. In, uh, in my opinion, uh, as, as Professor Sun mentioned that the low-dose low uh, uh, therapeutic effect of the uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, just uh, several papers uh, disclosed to, to uh, the public. So, uh, they they used the only CT uh, as a uh, low dose uh, uh, therapeutic machine, but I think a radio pharmaceutical also can be uh, deliver the radiation to the brain. So um, we, we just uh, 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 plan to make a project to uh, deliver the uh, ra uh, radioactivity to the brain to uh, uh, treat the Alzheimer's disease uh, in, in the animal model. But uh, just, just now planned, uh, we don't know uh, 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 that result is good or not yet, okay? Anyway, uh, we can start uh, uh, to the radio pharmaceutical for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, before start, my uh, uh, professor Yu Gyeong Kim in uh, Brahma Hospital, she uh, uh, gave her presentation file for, for this presentation and uh, several uh, slides uh, uh, modified uh, from her uh, presentation file. Uh, as uh, Professor So mentioned that dementia is a major uh, major uh, neurodegenerative disease in, in human race. So uh, in in uh, Alzheimer's disease is the most common uh, uh, disease in the dementia and other uh, uh, types of uh, uh, dementia is also happen. Uh, and then ATN. Uh, that is the guideline from the NIA AA uh, research framework. So that uh, ATN uh, guideline can uh, show the uh, good opportunity to to the radio pharmaceutical field. 
So as you can see here, uh, amyloid beta plug can be detected by the amyloid path, and also tau, aggregated tau can visualize with the tau path, and also uh, neurodegeneration or neuronal injury can be uh, seen uh, with the f path. pad. So, uh, and in the earlier stage, uh, we have uh, this kinds of tool for uh, detection of uh, Alzheimer's disease biomarker, but uh, in, in the clinical stage, they, uh, clinicians wants to uh, add uh, some kinds of evidence to, to, uh, to uh, diagnose Alzheimer's disease. But uh, after year of 2018, we can use uh, uh, these kinds of tool as a, a, a biomarker for uh, uh, disease uh, diagnosis. Uh, in, in, in the ATN guideline, they, they can use the MRI or FTG pad or amyloid pad or tau pad uh, as a whole mark of the uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, biomarker for uh, Alzheimer's disease. So uh, several types of A, A negative, A positive, uh, T positive or N negative like that. And so we can simply uh, 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 classify that, that kinds of uh, uh, disease state, status. Uh, I think uh, you, you may see these kinds of uh, 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 graph, uh, actually that uh, CSF amyloid beta uh, uh, concentration is increased uh, slowly. And after some time, you can see that uh, amyloid plaque in the brain with the pad. And after that, uh, CSF tau also increased uh, 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 after the uh, amyloid aggregation and then uh, we can see the tau path uh, after the tau aggregation in the brain. And after all the, uh, these kinds of evidence happen, and then uh, we can see the MRI or FDG path or with the morphological or uh, functional changes in the, in the brain. And right after that, uh, uh, we can identify that cognitive impairment uh, from the uh, from the uh, Alzheimer's patient. So, in in this uh, disease course, uh, early phase uh, we can see the amyloid path, and medium phase we can see the tau path, and late stage we can see the FDG path. Uh, because of these uh, three different uh, 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 path imaging agent. Uh, we, we can start from the neuropathology and then Alzheimer's disease. Uh, as you know that the two uh, hypotheses is, uh, 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 w w uh, has been a uh, uh, worldwide uh, 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 theory of the, uh, from the uh, almost 40 years ago. So uh, you can see the, uh, uh, from the, uh, I'm, Amyloid beta plaque uh, hypothesis, they uh, emphasize that the, after the plaque uh, uh, formation of the amyloid beta sheet, and then uh, that can be harmful for our uh, uh, brain uh, neuronal system, neuronal uh, damage. And also neurofibrary tangle uh, can uh, uh, cause the uh, neuronal damage for, for uh, human brain. So these two major hypotheses, we can uh, start uh, to develop the uh, new uh, radio pharmaceutical for in vivo imaging of the amyloid beta and uh, uh, tau image. Uh, all the story has begun uh, with this uh, uh, sensational uh, head image uh, in, in year of 2002. Uh, the, the internal conference of Alzheimer's disease and related disorders. Uh, and this is the first uh, non-invasive in vivo PET image of uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, brain. 
So you, here you can see the, this is normal brain and this brain is a, has a uh, highly uptake in the uh, frontal lobe. So uh, it, it, at that conference site, uh, all the uh, scientists uh, or uh, uh, they fly to them uh, right up to the one week later, a science report that the uh, long awaited techniques part the uh, Alzheimer's toxin. So at that, uh, and, and I think uh, 20 years ago, they believed that the uh, uh, amyloid beta plug is a toxin. But uh, we think that nowadays, uh, amyloid beta plug is not the toxin, but that is uh, just the scar after the uh, some kinds of uh, event was happened. And in, in this report, uh, people are going to point to this particular presentation and say, this is when we start uh, making progress. So uh, everyone waits to oh, these kinds of radio pharmaceuticals. So uh, as you know that uh, in case of Alzheimer's disease, just to, we can classify it with the symptom of the patient, but uh, from that, uh, uh, from that uh, after that time, we can see the uh, non-invasively and also in vivo imaging before uh, dying of the Alzheimer's disease patient. So we can uh, staging up the uh, disease status uh, with this kinds of imaging. So uh, uh, as I know that uh, before development of this image, uh, several groups in the world, they uh, uh, raised to develop the uh, new uh, amyl plaque imaging agent. Uh, William Clunk and uh, Chester Mattis success to uh, uh, see the first uh, image from, from the PIB, that is the C11 label, the, which for compound B. So after that, uh, so many compounds uh, has uh, developed. So as you know that the amyloid plaque uh, deposit is uh, uh, located in the outside of the uh, neuronal cell. So uh, we, we can uh, develop this uh, uh, amyloid plaque uh, uh, location with the uh, uh, PET uh, uh, imaging tools. Uh, first of all, I will a condition of the uh, amyloid plaque imaging agent. So here you can see the uh, uh, sufficient amount of uh, radio pharmaceutical should be entered, uh, should enter the brain and uh, actually uh, stability is also uh, important and uh, uh, lipophilicity is very important for penetration of BBB. So that uh, at the time they said that the 0.5 or two of the low P value is a, a moderate lipophilicity. But uh, in my thought, uh, uh, the molecular structure that contains amino or uh, hydroxyl group, uh, they can possess the, uh, less than uh, 1.5 of the logo P value. So uh, because of the uh, non-specific binding of the brain is uh, 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 will be happened in the near to the 2.0. And also, uh, uh, low uptake of metabolites to the brain. And then uh, after the uh, uh, metabolite, uh, after uh, uh, degradation of the uh, radio labeled part, that should be uh, uh, easily pass, uh, pass through the, pass out the uh, brain. So that will increase that uh, signal to noise ratio. And uh, Proper uh, retention time in, in the brain is very important. And also high specific activity, uh, high specific to the amyloid position. And also low non-specific binding is very important. 
uh, aminotrophic imaging uh, agent start from the staining agent. As you know that the before that development that uh, uh, imaging agent already we use these uh, kinds of uh, staining agent for uh, uh, autopsy brain, brain autopsy. So Congo red and crest. Uh, Dioflavin T is a very uh, famous uh, staining agent for amylate plaque. So you can see here uh, uh, red, red spot uh, depict the uh, uh, amylate plaque aggregation and this uh, uh, green light can show the amylate plaque in the brain. Uh, all, all the, this, Two types of uh, staining agent possess that the planar structure uh, of the highly conjugated uh, benzene links. So uh, that uh, scientist thinks that start from that uh, 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 that staining agent that uh, amyloid plaque imaging PET agent should be planar structure, and uh, from the uh, Clonk and Matisse uh, patent for uh, tau imaging agent, they uh, said that the kinds of uh, dioplavin T can uh, intercalate of the uh, beta sheet structure of the amyloid beta, uh, amyloid plaque. So also uh, cresamine G, uh, Congo red or cresamine G also uh, show the same uh, intercalation uh, property of the uh, amyloid uh, beta uh, flock. As, as I mentioned that the, we can uh, stain the uh, 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 patient brain. So uh, Brock, uh, Ken Brock, they reported that the uh, amyloid uh, disease patient uh, brain uh, show the uh, high, uh, uh, gradually increase that amyloid uh, deposition uh, with that is a highly correlation with the uh, symptoms. So oh, every all the scientists in the world, in the uh, radio, especially uh, radio uh, 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 chemists, they wants to develop the PET tracer. Uh, so year of 2002, they uh, uh, PIB, it was invented from the chest uh, mat of and also uh, FDDMP that is a kind of bo uh, both amyloid flux and tau uh, 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 that FDDMP has a, a, a high affinity to the both amyloid flux and tau uh, uh, tangles. And Another one is a SB13 or uh, SB13 is, is uh, invented by the uh, Clunk in the uh, uh, University of Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, from, from among these compounds, PIB is the first, uh, they got the uh, first human image and reported. Uh, from the uh, Dioflavin T, uh, they invent the uh, uh, C11 PIB from this uh, chemical skeleton. Uh, uh, this PIB a patent uh, 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 was uh, sell, sold to the uh, G Healthcare, and then G Healthcare continued to develop the uh, F18 version of the PIB. So as you can see here, almost the same structure with the uh, PIB, but uh, F18 is located in the ortho uh, position of the this amino group. And, and another group, they use the uh, oxazole uh, uh, containing, uh, uh, benzoxazole containing um, compound. There is a, uh, a NAV uh, something uh, 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 structure. So they, uh, their structure is different with the uh, PIB in, in the disc. Uh, uh, benzodiazole diazole link is uh, changed into the uh, uh, oxazole link. 
And another one is uh, uh, Aljaview. This is a Korean domestic uh, company developed the uh, 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 F-18 version of uh, PIB. They, they possess that the uh, hydrophilic uh, group into the uh, hydroxyl group of the benzene ring. So all, uh, most all the structure is the same, but uh, this hydrophilic group uh, can uh, increase the uh, hydrophilicity of the uh, that compound, and also they uh, 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 wants to uh, wash out uh, higher the wash out rate from the normal brain. So uh, these two compound uh, has uh, successfully commercialized uh, in US and Korea also. Uh, uh, I think uh, sooner or later, FC uh, Aljabu uh, will import to the uh, another uh, uh, China or other uh, country sooner or later. Uh, start from Congo Red, uh, SB13, they, uh, 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 Pro uh, Professor uh, Kuhn uh, developed this uh, C11 version of SP13. And after that, uh, AV1, as you know, that uh, that is name is a fluorobetaben or Muracek. And then also almost same structure, but they uh, contains a, a pyridine ring of the center. Uh, they, they developed the uh, AV45 that the uh, Compound uh, uh, license out to the uh, Li Lily, and uh, uh, so these these two uh, compound also uh, commercialized with the uh, in, in the U.S. and Korea also. So we have a four or uh, in, in case of Korea, we have a four different uh, uh, PET amino PET imaging agent in in the clinical stage. Uh, several differences between this, all these compound, as you can see here, uh, PIB has a um, uh, best, uh, 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 almost, almost the same with uh, KD value of the older the compound. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, F Alja view has a higher, uh, 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 KD value of the old among all these uh, PET compound. And uh, after the injection, several times you have to wait for for localized of the, uh, the that ready pharmaceutical into the uh, uh, brain uh, uh, lesion. So in case of uh, PIB, uh, we have to wait a uh, forty or seventy minutes. Uh, or uh, Alja view, we have to wait 30 to uh, 60 minutes. And those dosimetry is all, uh, very similar to all of the uh, compounds. So uh, if you want to use uh, uh, among these, uh, all these compound, then uh, just uh, you can uh, find the prescription of the, of the that radio pharmaceutical. Uh, this is the normal distribution of the PIC11 PIV uh, 40 minutes after the IV injection of the 20 milligram of uh, C11 PIV. Earlier stage, uh, I think we used uh, 20 milligram of uh, PIV, but nowadays we use uh, only 10 milligram of C11 PIV because of the PET scanner uh, sensitivity is increasing now. And you can see here, uh, just a slight uptake of white matter in, in the normal brain. But AD patient brain, you can see the high uptake of the whole area of the uh, 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 gray matter or, or frontal lobe like that. So I, I, I don't know the, I'm, I'm not a physician, I'm a radiochemist, so I can not uh, uh, identify the, what, what is the disease uh, foresight, but uh, I cannot understand. Oh, this is normal. Uh, this is 
uh, this brain has some problem in, in these images. So uh, in case of PIB, that normal distribution is very low than other F18 compound. And also uh, fruit metamol, that F18 version of G compound is on the same uh, 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 normal distribution of the PI uh, with the PIB. So I think uh, you may uh, uh, learn to how to uh, uh, see these kinds of uh, disease foci or uh, how to diagnose uh, these kinds of uh, AD patient brain. Uh, so this is the normal brain and uh, uh, this is brain. You can see the uh, uh, dramatically di uh, differentiate the uh, 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 amyloid plaque uh, in the loci located in the brain. And also in, in the FDG that uh, can uh, show the neural degeneration uh, uh, force. So there are a slight uh, decrease uptake in the, uh, some brain regions. So uh, PIB, uh, the amyloid path imaging can visualize the uh, uh, more uh, 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 accurately uh, than the FDG, but still F FDG has a role for uh, neurodegeneration of the uh, several, uh, some uh, disease brain. And Dura check showed the almost same uh, uh, normal uh, negative scan of the brain. So you, you can see the normal uptake of the uh, uh, white matter. And also positive scan show the high uh, uptake in the uh, whole brain region. Um, the G compound, filtametamol, can show the almost same uh, with the C11 PIV, but uh, they said that the uh, uh, normal uh, uh, white matter uptake is slightly higher than the C11 PIB. And I'll just view that Korean domestic uh, uh, compound, company compound, they uh, uh, wants to uh, uh, wants to make a more hydrophilic compound, but uh, as you can see that, uh, that compared to the other uh, CLM PIB or other uh, F18 compound, you can see the high, higher, highest uh, uh, white metal take uh, in, the, in the normal brain. But still we can uh, uh, differentiate that the diseased brain or the normal brain. But intermediate stage, uh, I think a, a special uh, clinician's skill to uh, uh, to detect the uh, uh, positive scan or uh, negative scan. Uh, white matter uptake is considered to the uh, uh, non-specific and uh, uptake and has shown be the non-saturable and uh, largely attributed to the uh, specific uh, white matter kinetics. So. Uh, uh, you you can already you can see the uh, some radio pharmaceutical has a high uh, white matter uptake, but uh, still we have a good uh, uh, characteristic with the uh, 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 low white matter uptake uh, radio pharmaceutical, and you can just uh, simply select the uh, uh, radio pharmaceutical. Uh, or you can consider the these kinds of matter uptake as a non-specific binding, but uh, in same same radio pharmaceutical, you have to if you wait for more uh, some longer time, and and white matter uptake should be uh, decreased. So so if you have a uh, have a uh, uh, limited source of the radio pharmaceutical for for the selection, then just simply uh, after the injection, you have to wait for a longer time. And here is the uh, direct comparison of the C11 PIB and fluorobeta band, and almost the same pattern of uh, 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 in, in the disease uh, brain. But uh, as you know that the F18 uh, has a, a 
short uh, 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 beta positron kinetic energy. So resolution is better than the C11 uh, compound. So you can see the uh, somewhat uh, uh, better uh, imaging resolution than the PIB. But uh, that all uh, square value is uh, uh, 0 0.85. So there is, I think uh, uh, they said that there is no difference between the C11 PIB and p 10 And uh, yeah, this is the fluorometamol, not the flu, uh, uh, fluorometamol. Yeah, fluorometamol is a sh can show the almost same uh, distribution with the uh, PIC level PIB, and and the fluorometamol and C level uh, has a high correlation with the I scale value is uh, zero point nine six, and uh, already uh, mentioned that the uh, full is uh, uh, show the almost same uh, distribution with the CLM PID. And uh, here you can see the all the uh, four different uh, F18 version of uh, PET, uh, amyloid PET imaging agents. They can show the almost same R0, R square value uh, with the CLM PID and other, uh, 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 all, all the almost the same. So just simply, uh, you can select the available uh, radio pharmaceutical in your country, your own country. So uh, you can uh, adapt th this uh, 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 pet tracer for, for your uh, clinical uh, status. Uh, we will move to the Tau Agrate Gates imaging agent. Tau Tangle also, or Brock and Brock uh, reported the, uh, the uh, disease stage, uh, uh, increasing the disease stage with the symptom-based uh, diagnosis. Uh, and after that, uh, the post-mortem study also showed the same increasing uh, uh, Tau Tangle up, uh, aggregation in, in the uh, human brain. Uh, as Professor Saw explained, explain the, uh, how uh, tau tangle has uh, formed. As, a, as you know that the uh, normal tau is uh, stabilized with the, uh, several factors. And after uh, some time, or we, we don't know still why, why uh, these kinds of hyper is has happened, but after the postpolarization, uh, these uh, hi highly postpolarated uh, Tau protein is uh, gathered together and a uh, small portion of uh, aggregate formed and they can uh, be removed by, uh, by the uh, uh, lymphatics or uh, uh, blood uh, brain barrier. But after some time, they can form the uh, tangle, then uh, they cannot pass through the B, uh, BBB or cell membrane. As as you know that the tau tangle is located in the cell, uh, uh, inside of the cell. So uh, these kinds of tangle can, uh, I think, uh, not so easy to uh, uh, remove this tangle in the living human brain. Uh, tau uh, PET imaging agent uh, 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 developed from the start from the inhibitor of the tau aggregation. Uh, I think especially in the Japanese group, uh, they uh, 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 emphasized to develop the uh, tau imaging agent. Then, then uh, they start uh, from the old inhibitor, uh, tau aggregation inhibitors. inhibitors. Uh, from the uh, Ian um, Mendel Mendelkov in the uh, Max Planck uh, uh, Institute, they a uh, 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 said that uh, several compound has a uh, inhibitor uh, uh, affinity to the tau aggregation. So, uh, especially uh, uh, PTH, uh, phenylthiazole hydrazide can uh, inhibit the uh, tau aggregation or rhodamine group or uh, anthraquinone groups. And 
The other one is uh, N-penylamine uh, group or uh, thiocarba uh, cyan group. In, in, in this structure, uh, they possess that uh, almost same with the uh, 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 amylose plaque image agent. They have they possess that the planar structure, but uh, these plans are, are somewhat distorted. So you can see the earlier uh, amylose plaque imaging agent has, has a linear form of the planar structure, but this tau imaging agent, tau uh, anti tau uh, agent, show the somewhat distorted, distorted planar structure. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, they they uh, uh, think that that planar but a distorted structure can show the tau uh, uh, flock in in the living human human brain, and uh, for uh, uh, we have to consider the several factors of the tau imaging agent. The tau uh, should be a, a how imaging agents should uh, pass through the cell membrane, also BBB. And uh, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to consider that the amyloid plaque uh, has a, 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 a higher concentration in the brain because of the, uh, you know, that the concentration of the tau fiber has less than uh, five or uh, 20 times. Than the uh, than the amyloid plaque, so sensitivity sensitivity is also very important, and also we have to penetrate the BBB and uh, cell membrane. Uh, there are uh, 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 huge number of differences, uh, huge number of uh, tau imaging agent already uh, developed. Uh, I think. Uh, this tau sphere is a uh, uh, only one uh, uh, commercialized compound till now. Uh, uh, because of the first uh, human imaging got from the C11 PBB3, but uh, uh, this uh, T807 uh, that also um, uh, invented by the uh, Avid uh, uh, company, uh, these kinds of Compound start from the FDDMP because of the these FDDMP show that the uh, distorted uh, planar structure and you can see the somewhat linear but distorted. You can see here also uh, linear uh, uh, planar structure and the distorted structure, and this MK Merck compound show the uh, uh, dramatic that angle is somewhat. Uh, 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 angle is uh, narrow than the other compound. You can see here, this planar structure show the uh, kinds of 120 degree uh, uh, distorted from the main uh, plane. And other uh, uh, several compound uh, show the uh, uh, almost same uh, affinity or uh, uh, structures. And in, in, among this compound, you can see here T807 uh, or uh, tau here has also uh, commercialized. And I think uh, THK uh, still undergo the clinical phase uh, for clinical trials and other uh, uh, compounds also in the clinical trials. As I mentioned that the FDDMP showed the uh, amyloid plaque and the tau fibers. Uh, so uh, earlier uh, time, they said that uh, that will be the uh, best compound for uh, amyloid uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. But nowadays uh, for uh, plaque imaging, tau uh, amyl amyloid path imaging agents, and then for the uh, tau uh, tangle, uh, tau imaging agent, we have to uh, separate the uh, uh, both uh, uh, neuropathology because of uh, uh, some stage we have to ident uh, differentiate that the amyloid uh, plaque or uh, tau, uh, tau uh, plaque, tau fibers. 
This is the first human image from the NIRS, that is the uh, Japan, uh, and, uh, some radiation research institute in the Japan. So they uh, firstly report that uh, this uh, 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 tau imaging agent can show the uh, tau pathy, but uh, amyloid uh, flux affinity to the amyloid flux is very low. So uh, they uh, they uh, insist that uh, they uh, this CLM PBB3 can show the uh, tau uh, tangle only. Uh, and after the, this report, we visit to the NIRS in Japan, and we, we got the, that precursor of the C11 uh, PV3. And after the labeling, we can uh, use this compound as a, a tau imaging agent, but uh, we cannot use because of the that uh, C11 PV3 has a very uh, low uh, stability. So. After the uh, one time of light uh, uh, touch to the that solution, then compound has gone. It's very lay, lay by. So before injection, we have to uh, make a darkness. So uh, and and then we have to use a kinds of uh, 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 infrared uh, goggle for for uh, for this. Uh, a compound, so we can cannot use this compound as a clinical uh, stage, uh, and all these compound has a different uh, uh, binding affinity to the uh, uh, several uh, different uh, tau hybrids. So, uh, as I mentioned, that the structure has different uh, structure of those compound has uh, have a different, and also. Uh, that affinity to the each uh, uh, fiber is also different. So we don't know what is the uh, best compound till yet. And as you can see here, uh, CLM PBB3 or uh, CLM THK compound show the different uh, 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 affinity or different location of the uh, tau pathy, tau, uh, Plaque. And here is the uh, AV, uh, the AVD compound and the uh, TH compound comparison study. They show the somewhat different uh, uh, pattern of the optic in the uh, disease brain. So still, uh, we don't know though what is the best one, but uh, these kinds of first generation tau pet tracers show the uh, 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 show the tau, the uh, the possibility of the tau pad uh, imaging, and they they show the after development of this uh, first generation tau pad tracer, we they said they uh, found that uh, non-specific binding of the uh, normal brain, such as we, we call that is off target binding. Uh, so especially mao uh, monoamine oxidase B or monoamine oxidase A uh, uh, can uh, 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 uptake these kinds of uh, compound. So after knowing this uh, 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 off target binding, so second generation uh, tau pet tracer wants to make a, a, a lower the uh, off-target binding. So they uh, developed uh, several kinds of uh, uh, different uh, tau pet tracers. They, uh, uh, you can see here, uh, sometimes uh, off no off-target binding, sometimes less uh, uh, off-target binding than the first generation of the tau pet uh, tracers. Uh, still, uh, we don't know what, what is the best compound for uh, uh, tau uh, PET imaging, but uh, still we don't know what is the uh, 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 tau PET is the uh, with the different clinical phenotype or pathology, and still we 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 have a complexity of the tau PET. Uh, 
different pet tracer with the different uh, selectivity and uh, off target binding and also uh, uh, other uh, pathological marker uh, with the uh, uh, re relationship with the other pathological marker and also uh, in vivo pet uh, and also in vitro binding uh, is different uh, for uh, tau pet imaging. Uh, but uh, 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 tau pet tau uh, tau pet imaging can correlate with the co cognitive function. So uh, so tau pet is a more uh, effectively show the co cognitive function with the uh, uh, HIM disease patient than the uh, amyloid plaque imaging. And next one is FDG. As you know that the FDG also can be used for uh, I mean, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So that uh, diagnosis uh, value is sensitivity is uh, more uh, around 91% and specificity is 86%. So uh, you can use FDG using for uh, amyloid uh, Alzheimer's disease for, for, for diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. And as you can see here, uh, uh, slight uh, uh, decrease of the FTG in the uh, disease patient, uh, patient brain. So uh, after the development of the uh, that amyloid plaque imaging agent, uh, they, they uh, expect that uh, sooner or later, uh, therapeutic uh, amyloid uh, Alzheimer's disease therapeutics will be developed or commercialized. But uh, till now, only one uh, uh, amyloid treatment agent has approved by the uh, uh, US FDA. That is a uh, uh, antibody-based uh, therapeutics that can uh, uh, clear the amyloid plaque from the uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease patient. But as uh, Professor So mentioned that uh, there are uh, no, all, almost same uh, PET, uh, amyloid PET imaging with, uh, with the control group and the uh, uh, treated group, but uh, still uh, we, we can understand that what is the status of, status of the uh, current uh, uh, development of therapeutics is uh, uh, there are still no other small chemical or small uh, 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 therapeutic uh, than the uh, antibody uh, drugs because of antibody drug can uh, penetrate only less than one uh, uh, 0.1% uh, 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 that uh, 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 penetrate to the BBB in the brain. So how they can uh, clear uh, from the human brain with this uh, compound. But uh, uh, we hope sooner or later we can have uh, 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 Alzheimer's therapeutics from, the, uh, from uh, uh, some company. And also next step, uh, 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 radio chemist wants to make uh, uh, inflammation imaging as uh, for a diagnosis for uh, amyloid uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease before, because of that uh, chronic uh, inflammation can cause the uh, 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 Alzheimer's disease. So, but that is uh, still challenging because of the uh, chronic inflammation. Uh, if if that uh, uh, Inflammation is very uh, 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 not so uh, significantly, and then uh, how can we visualize that uh, inflammation foresight in the uh, uh, living human? So that is the uh, main uh, 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 obstacle for uh, uh, inflammation imaging for uh, Alzheimer's disease. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. So thank you for, for listening. Uh,
if you have any question, you can uh, write to the chatting box. Before I think uh, people might have a question in the chat, I would like to ask uh, Professor Lee well, whether is it possible by chemically to predict whether there might be a off-target binding or uh, like the specificity to the tau's. Is there any way that before development that we can predict the uh, off-target bindings of these agents? Uh, as we discussed with the uh, Professor Tong Su Lee, so uh, I, I think uh, that uh, Mao A or uh, Mao B uh, uh, specific, uh, uh, that is an uh, enzyme. So, so if you want to look up the, the off-target binding to the Mao B or Mao A, and then simply you can uh, make uh, that kinds of uh, radio pharmaceutical and then you can uh, uh, make an affinity study to the mao a or mao b then you can select the uh, lower lower binding affinity to the mao a or mao b then you can select the, that uh, possess that the uh, tau uh, tau fiber affinity and then uh, you can select uh, uh, that compound for a uh, uh, tau imaging agent. So, so uh, uh, actually, the second generation uh, tau agents are known to have less mao a or like off target binding. Do you what do you think about the chemical? So, what is the important difference between the first generation and second generation uh, tau agents? As for your aspect, uh, in my thought, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, that distorted angle is uh, most important. I, in my thought, I don't know the that that is the uh, uh, just a hypothesis. That angle is very important, so that's why I I just uh, look up to the MK uh, Merck compound. Okay, that one should be the lower. Uh, than any other compound. So then after that, uh, I found that there is no uh, uh, off-target binding to the Mao A or Mao B. So that angle is very important, maybe. I think there is a uh, question in the chat. Okay. Uh, more complicated person. Okay, I will read. According to your experience, which is more complicated preparation between uh, PIB, fluorobetaben, or and tau. What uh, your recommendation for make the preparation more easy? I think uh, as you know that the C11 uh, projects that the 20 minute, minutes half-life and F18 projects two hours half-life. So, uh, uh, I think definitely F18 compound is uh, better uh, uh, than the uh, CLM compound. But uh, in, in the commonly used uh, uh, automatic synthesizer, they, they, they uh, 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 already uh, has a program for the synthesis of these, those compounds. So you simply you uh, adapt uh, just click on onto the that automatic synthesizer and press the uh, select the program for a synthesis of the fluorobetaben or other uh, tau imaging agent and then just press uh, go button to get the uh, that compound. So nowadays uh, that is easy to preparation. But if you don't have that kinds of automatic synthesis, I think uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, preparation is almost the same uh, labor uh, work, uh, work. So as I mentioned that the C11 compound, you have to hurry up for maintain the, uh, 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 the injection dose. Okay.
Okay, another uh, uh, question. With all of the complex C in the tau imaging, why you still need to combine what amyloid and neurogeneration, uh, neurodegeneration imaging to the diagnose Alzheimer's disease? Uh, uh, I, I'm not a, a physician for this kinds of uh, 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 question, but in my thought, um, tau or pathy, if you can see the tau pathy in, in the living human, uh, that uh, why don't, I don't know the why, why that is very important, but still, uh, still you can uh, uh, identify that there is a tau uh, tangle in, in the, this uh, patient, and then we can compare that the, what is the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, kinds of disease uh, pattern in, in the, uh, this uh, uh, patient. So I think uh, uh, still, still uh, argue for why, why we have to do the tau imaging, but um, I, in my thought, uh, I think sooner or later we can uh, uh, see the why we have to use tau imaging agent in the literature maybe. So I think Min Sok So can answer, or uh, later on, uh, yeah. Professor Yu Gyeong Kim can answer this question. Yeah, I think uh, at a uh, later uh, lecture series is at fall, September, from Professor Yu Gyeong Kim will deliver us more sophisticated answers for this. But regarding the, the questions from Dr. Leza and Vika, I think the, <clears throat> the matter is the matter of the definition. Uh, what is the Alzheimer's disease actually is the most important question. And nowadays the paradigm is uh, defining it as a based on the biomarker, not based on the clinical symptoms actually. So actually, as I mentioned earlier about the, about the cancer, you think, you actually diagnose the cancer by their pathologic results, like adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma, not by their like symptoms of the patient. So the changing is that we how we define Alzheimer's disease is now we are changing to whether there if there is a hallmark of the Alzheimer's disease, which is the amyloid plaque and the neurofibrillary tangle. And if there are both, we can define it as an Alzheimer's disease. That's why there are more in increasing inter interest in this imaging-based uh, biomarkers. And for the neurodegeneration, actually, it is more relevant to the clinical symptom itself. Actually, if there is more, uh, uh, like more aggravation in this neurodegeneration imaging, actually, they are relevant to the clinical symptom. So, this also can give some more confidence and for the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So I think it's a matter of definition, how we define this Alzheimer's disease. And I think uh, one more question I, I have for Professor Lee is about uh, there are like drugs nowadays are developed based on the antibody based drugs. Is there some studies that like by radio labeling or to see the distribution of or the, the fate of these antibody based uh, drugs when they are injected? So whether they are going into the brain or what are their fate after the administration? Is there some studies? Uh, I think uh, Europe 2018, maybe in the, that is the ISRS International uh, Conference of uh, Radio Pharmaceutical Sciences, they, in, in Beijing, uh, one uh, 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 planned lecture uh, showed that the antibody development of, for uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease they said that after, after the labeling of the antibody, 
and then they can see the 0.1% uh, uh, delivery to the brain. So that is the highest level of the uh, uh, penetration of uh, uh, BVB. So uh, up to now, we don't know the uh, 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 nowadays technology for uh, antibody delivery to the brain, but they want to make uh, uh, kinds of uh, peptide tagging to uh, 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 penetrate the antibody to the brain. So uh, now, now I, I know that the, some several peptide uh, has a candidate for the uh, increasing uptake to, to the uh, antibody to the uh, brain. But up to now, I th as I know that the 0.1% is the highest level of the antibody delivery to the brain. Thank you. I think there is from Dr. Karishma. Okay. Uh, in the previous slide, you presented the use of FTG for a neurodegenerative. How often do you use FTG for a, a neurodegenerative imaging? I think uh, Min Sok So can answer this. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, now currently, in it's only for limited to the experience in Seoul National University, not like all Korea, but. We we have very limited use of FTG PET for neurodegenerative uh, defining the neurodegeneration. And actually, clinically, we are using more often the amyloid PET and the and also MRI. So to MRI to define the atrophic change and the neurodegeneration, and plus the amyloid PET for to define the amyloid plus is currently what uh, of, we do often in the clinical base, not the FTG PET right now. Uh, let me just to add uh, one more opinion from Korea. Uh, this is Lee, another Lee. So in addition to the information uh, given by uh, Professor So, um, actually uh, the almost 10 years ago, our psychiatrist colleagues Interestingly, in uh, our hospital, the psychiatrists are, uh, they, they are in charge of the, taking care of the dementia uh, clinic. So uh, in Bundang Hospital, the neurologist is, is in charge. So uh, he was the, uh, the best person to be referred to. So we asked him. Uh, if uh, floral beta band is available, uh, what uh, is your plan for imaging uh, the suspected MCI, normal uh, aged or the dementia, the AD patients? So he immediately answered to us that if, uh, if uh, amyloid uh, A beta or amyloid plaque imaging uh, the PET is available, then uh, uh, he promised, uh, actually, he committed himself to uh, say that uh, he is going to immediately stop FDG PET, which uh, he was doing for clinical study. He uh, uh, was the primary investigator of this country, dementia, uh, almost to Alzheimer uh, disease neuroimaging initiative like one. So he was the key person and he accumulated uh, several hundreds of uh, cases uh, with uh, structural MRI and PET and others. And he published a lot since uh, that study. So uh, he accumulated a lot of uh, FTG PET uh, data uh, within the, uh, the, uh, the with, uh, with his patients in his clinic, but uh, he uh, declared and announced that uh, information and he uh, likewise, he stopped now. So that's the uh, current, uh, the practice of this hospital, which was given by Professor Ho. 
So I guess uh, the same thing is going to happen in any clinic and any hospital in Asia. Uh, even though you have a, a larger, a more and more larger population of uh, dementia patients because of the aging society, aged society, and uh, in our case, and super aged society. But uh, uh, the, this thing will happen. So then uh, that's kind of a current information. And I have another uh, information for uh, future of. Uh, our country. Still, uh, the Tau imaging, uh, Professor Saw, uh, Tau imaging for Tau CPR or others, is it available in this country, in our country, uh, commercially, or which was approved by the national insurance system? Uh, no, it is just under research purpose only. Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm saying. Two years ago, I have invited uh, the uh, person the, the, the doctor, psychiatrist uh, doctor uh, to my uh, the office and I asked him again, once a Tau imaging agent is available, uh, then what is your plan? You, you just stopped uh, FTG pad and you are doing only uh, floor beta band imaging. And he uh, the requested floor beta band imaging even for my mother-in-law. So uh, the MRI and, 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 and for beta vein imaging was done uh, with her. So he immediately answered to me, once uh, the tau imaging is available, then he will stop for beta vein imaging and it's gone. So uh, that's a kind of uh, an, uh, the prediction. And uh, that's uh, up to his uh, confidence and his uh, his uh, the raison uh, d'etre, meaning the reason of uh, existence as a physician. So once uh, the uh, uh, pet, uh, pet imaging is available for um, for uh, the best comparison with the mental status examination or the uh, the disease course, then uh, he's going to adopt that and discard everything. So uh, FTG PET uh, was his uh, just a uh, imaging correlate of mini mental status examination. Sometimes MMSC is uh, a little bit uh, the uh, oversimplified one. So uh, CDR, clinical dementia, uh, the uh, scale uh, was uh, further used, but uh, it takes time. So then uh, FTG PET was a uh, was a kind of a apprentice or auxiliary or accessory kind of thing. And amyloid plug was uh, the was adopted by him because uh, around that time the many uh, the uh, clinical trials to use the monoclonal antibody to eradicate, remove uh, uh, amyloid A beta from the brain. But uh, until recently, everything uh, has been uh, the dropped by the companies. And then uh, the finally, uh, aducanumab has been approved. Uh, but according to the JAMA uh, report uh, in March, and also uh, 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 the, even after approval by uh, the US uh, FDA, uh, people who had been involved in, uh, who had been in charge of that uh, the accreditation, uh, that approval in uh, US FDA, several people has resigned in protest. And then uh, there have been many articles in Nature and Science, News and Views, and there have been many groups who are against that decision. So. Uh, however, uh, the approval is approval. So clinical approval is going, uh, it has opened the uh, way to do the post-market survey and which uh, would be adopted by uh, neutral, uh, the physicians or the, um, uh, the psychiatrists or uh, neurologists who are interested in 
uh, the to find uh, uh, for interest in finding a way to improve in any way uh, their patients. So uh, that might be uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Charisma's uh, uh, curiosity. So uh, that's kind of uh, one institution's anecdotal uh, report. And please refer to it and uh, see it, uh, what happens in your institution. Okay, so the Professor Saw again and Professor Lee again. Uh, another uh, question from the Lian. So why amyloid beta plaque imaging agent can detect uh, Alzheimer's disease earlier than the tau release? Uh, so I in my thought, uh, in the pathologically, that uh, amyloid plaque uh, uh, formation is earlier than the uh, tau uh, aggregates normally. So that's why uh, earlier detection is uh, possible than the tau aggregates. So, and, and uh, Professor So, would you please explain the uh, earlier occurrence or earlier observation, uh, uh, why it is not uh, always uh, desirable? And in case of the amyloid and tau, there's some kind of, uh, the, some, some neutral or uh, uh, innocent bystanders would think that the earlier detection would be better than uh, the later one. But it is not the case with the AD. And would you please explain, elaborate uh, explanation a little bit in detail? Uh, I, uh, and uh, then uh, let me just kind of uh, continue. Yeah. So in case of uh, AD, uh, amyloid plaque uh, is observed uh, very early. So that's okay. However, in case of the normal elderly people, amyloid, a similar amount of the amyloid plaque is also observed. And, uh, uh, with, uh, they don't know. Uh, they, I had uh, raised the same, same kind of question a uh, decade ago, and I started to just observe how the uh, AD scientists or the neurodegeneration specialist uh, scientists uh, in the world, how they think. So finally, I found that the uh, uh, amyloid plaque is not uh, a kind of a culprit. Still, there are many reports that amyloid plaque, especially it is uh, to be neuritic plaque, uh, is going to just to uh, hyper excited neurons around, and uh, they are in uh, cooperation with uh, uh, extracellular tau. They are kind of uh, excited overly, sometimes causing seizure disorder in case of the AD. Uh, however, the tau has a dual phase. The tau is uh, in other cases, uh, it's uh, 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 the decreased excitation, meaning hypoexcitation, and then even tau is trying extracellular tau is trying to just to ameliorate uh, the effect of the side effect of the accumulated uh, amyloid. In that sense, uh, in that case, the uh, amyloid plaque is different from the A beta. So they call it uh, A beta oligomer. So uh, the plaque is different from the A beta, and we are imaging plaque. So imaging at the plaque is, uh, is kind of a, in sometimes um, inactive waste in the waste basket. So the accumulated A beta. Uh, uh, sometimes is inert. They are not causing problem. They are just there. But uh, we cannot differentiate between the active A beta or the A beta oligomer or active uh, plaque or uh, inactive plaque. So uh, we are just imaging uh, the plaques. It's the same with the uh, tau. 
However, uh, so the tau, uh, uh, the pathological tau, we call it a pathological tau excreted uh, by the uh, neurons, uh, so many. And then they are mutated, they are truncated, they are uh, hyperphosphorylated, they uh, gather together with the amyloid plaque make, uh, to make the neuritic plaque. And if they are not excreted, they form a neurofibrillar tangle within the neurons. So uh, recently, neurofibrillar tangles uh, began to, uh, uh, they came to be considered also inert. Uh, either uh, uh, so regardless of the presence of the, the neurofibrillar tangle, the pathologic effect of the extracellular tau uh, uh, can take place or not. So uh, the uh, neurofibrillar tangle is uh, out of the question, actually. The uh, uh, AD neurobiologists or neuroscientists, they are eager to find out which form of uh, uh, the tau, extracellularly lo uh, localized, uh, are uh, uh, detrimental or uh, the harmful to the neurons or the brain. They don't know. So that's a simple, uh, the, they see, say they don't know. So uh, wouldn't it be curious uh, that the uh, aducanumab, which is uh, going to remove A beta or plaque from the brain uh, has worked, but uh, it only worked in uh, MCI, uh, MCI to AD, uh, the, uh, the early stage of AD patients with a higher dose. And sometimes the uh, brain edema, uh, the side effects, and uh, with uh, kind of uh, ambiguous in uh, one trial, one of the three, uh, one of the two or three tr trials, uh, there has been a discrepancy in the uh, the data and data interpretation. And this is a if uh, this would have been a kind of a scam. Finally, you might just find it out after several years. Uh, then the uh, US FDA would have done a wrong, incorrect decision, and there might be a kind of a scandal. Uh, if it's, it is a success, then uh, it's kind of a, another quantum jump in the, tr uh, the trial treatment. But, you know, uh, because of the kind of expedited decision, uh, expedited use decision of uh, uh, the aducanumab by uh, FDA, the, uh, the trial treatment is being paid by the patients themselves. That's the problem. I don't think uh, the, uh, the uh, aducanumab is causing a huge uh, the harm to the patients. Why? Because uh, their uh, real problem is uh, the lack of effect. So the uh, lack of effect means that uh, aducanumab is not uh, going into the brain very well. And once inside the brain, and they are not going to interact with the real uh, culprit of the AD pathology. So this kind of uh, 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 the controversy and uh, dispute is online. So uh, with my uh, just a crude introduction or a biased opinion, so uh, why don't you just to kind of find out in the literature, uh, online, internet, uh, JAMA, General American Medical Association and uh, the March issue, and a news line of the nature and science, even nature and science, or arts forum. Arts forum, there might be a kind of uh, uh, the contradictory uh, the opinions. So, so that's uh, so uh, early diagnosis of uh, amyloid. So actually, 
uh, imaging of amyloid, would it be beneficial to the uh, patients? Uh, still, I have uh, no confidence in that. So uh, I'm uh, very grateful uh, to my psychiatrist colleague. He did his own uh, trial study, but uh, it was not paid by patients. It was paid by uh, National Research Foundation. And then he stopped. Now, uh, but uh, 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 actually uh, it was uh, at that uh, time, the KBase, Korean database was uh, consisted of the FDG PET, C11 PIB, we, we just uh, uh, made it uh, possible. Uh, Professor Yun San Lee had uh, just uh, uh, imported, imported the uh, uh, technology to uh, synthesize or the labor uh, C11 PIB. It, it, it was not so easy uh, the 20 years ago or uh, 15 years ago. And then uh, he's doing uh, the floor beta band which is paid by the patients and then uh, assisted the, the supported by the national insurance. And uh, now uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, once uh, tau is available, tau imaging is much more like uh, the CSF tau, uh, the measurement. CSF tau measurement is a, 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 another long story. So you can just kind of, uh, uh, I hope this kind of uh, lengthy and kind of uh, a, a crooked explanation would uh, help you to be confused, <laughs> not to be confused, to be confused. Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, Please talk. Okay. So, so, can we close? Yeah, before closing, I would like to just briefly uh, introduce some of our ongoing project of this uh, workshop and lecture series. So, just some more, uh, just a minute, I think. May. And before, I would like to say hello to our uh, participants and also participants from BIR Hospital Nepal and Dr. Arun. I think it's really a... nice to see you. And also Dr. Devoli from Philippines and Dr. Rasna. So the thing I would like to uh, introduce is about the uh, current. Uh, so we are, so since uh, 2018, several years ago till now, Professor Dong Su Lee here and our colleagues have been expanding this project, the TAIN project via the National Research Education Network, which is supported by the European Union. And so at the first, as you can see from the red ones, the, from the first call, we started from collaborating with three countries and we have expanded to six countries as the second proposal, which is the first call. And now we are moving forward with eight countries for the fifth call application and this and from this uh, project, the TAME project uh, under second and fourth call has, I think may have helped our young nuclear medicine physicians and scientists to attend the international conferences and like, for example, Theranostic World Congresses. However, due to the COVID pandemic, there was some difficulty in carrying out offline activities. However, we have, now converted our project to online based workshop and are now able to provide more educational opportunities. So we expect actually more participants would be benefited from this education without time and space constant. So what I wanted to un, uh, introduce was that we have recently proposed an, uh, again for aforementioned the fifth call apply 
to expand our uh, this, uh, education. So our goal is, as you can see, to consolidate this pre-established educational environment and expand more and uh, accordingly and finally make a sustainable education system is our goal. So uh, you can actually refer to our website, I think. And I, we, as we have introduced, we are uploading every uh, work materials and you can see the YouTube link to, again, if you want, if you have something to see, I think you can refer to this site and see the lecture materials and see the lecture through the YouTube. So our purpose, uh, I, we want to actually more uh, recruit more uh, nations from the Asian countries and more uh, nuclear medicine to be participated in this project. So in regard, uh, we have planned also a weekly lecture series in the following fall, second fall semester. So actually today's summer workshop has been a bit short, I think, but please think of it as a prequel of the upcoming lecture series. So these lecture series which will, uh, which will begin at September and it is actually focused as you can see uh, on neural imaging and neural degeneration, and even like diagnostics for the brain diagnostics and transcriptomics, which is a novel approach. And in addition, as you can see, there are some sessions uh, which are for PSMA and FOP diagnostics updates and lymphoma and hepatoma related sessions. Actually, you might think as a awkward session, but these are from the feedback from the previous uh, workshop and lecture series. So please give us more requests and feedback for the better workshop in the future. Okay, I think this might be the end of my introduction. And so even in difficult times, I think we can overcome it and we hope to see you again in good health. So thank you very much. And if uh, anyone has further yeah. questions or comments, uh, Dr. So, I would like to speak something. Uh, yeah. uh, first of all, Anang Asunika Sasunim and Namaste from Nepal. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you, uh, everyone, and thank you, Professor. First of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Dong Sang Lee and Professor Sang Lee and Prof uh, Dr. Asa for um, arranging this uh, beautiful uh, seminar today and the series in the coming days. And this is uh, on behalf of whole Nepalese and personally from me, because uh, in this, uh, during, uh, in 2021, uh, and because uh, while I was in Korea, when this uh, team project was started, I was telling Professor uh, Dong Lee that Professor, this, uh, could you please uh, enroll Nepal in this project too, because we have also few, uh, medicine physician and we are developing nuclear medicine in Nepal and finally Professor Lee listened to me and he enrolled Nepal in this project and finally we have uh, this project in Nepal and uh, and through this project we Professor Lee uh, finally enrolled two universities in Nepal one is Bidhi Parla Institute of Health Sciences where I am uh, here in this institute and another is Beer Hospital that is National Academy of uh, medical sciences, the hospital, and you can see on the uh, screen today uh, the a few colleagues. Uh, especially, I would like to name the uh, uh, their, uh, the phys uh, phys nuclear medicine physician. They are Dr. Dr. Uh, Sagar Marjan and Dr. Anu Bhatrai. They are uh, listening uh, uh, this seminar today. They are uh, attending this seminar today, and they are very happy uh, to be uh, the part of this project and. Uh, they will be happy to attend the uh, attend the coming uh, series also. So uh, I I really am very happy. We are really very happy, and I'm again very thankful to Professor Lee and the team uh, project Asia Connect. Everyone who has been uh, doing this great, uh, providing this great opportunity for us, please. And we are hoping to extend this to other part of Nepal also and to other universities also in coming days. Thank you, Professor Lee, again.
Okay, uh, so let me just uh, add uh, one or two uh, comments. Uh, so Dr. Uh, uh, Rasna Tiwari, uh, I just uh, uh, sent to your uh, past president of uh, SNMI of India, uh, SNMI, uh, SNM of India, Rakesh Kumar, uh, to represent uh, what, uh, what it's because the current president is Barjinder Singh. Uh, he is a, a radiochemist, not a physician, so I sent and uh, CC carbon copy to you regarding this project. And also, uh, uh, they welcome uh, Devali uh, Tumapun, who had been a, a fellow here. And uh, I communicated with your Philippine Society and uh, the, during the direct uh, uh, board uh, meeting uh, the day before, uh, the several days ago, uh, the uh, Dr. Uh, Patricia Bautista, she just uh, sent uh, me uh, the information that the Thomas Pasquale previously uh, in IAEA, uh, he's, he's going to be in charge of the communication with this project. And Thomas Pasquale is in a government institute representing uh, the Philippine, uh, the atomic energy or nuclear energy or something. So uh, uh, the, now uh, we, uh, uh, we were supposed to include two countries, but uh, the, during our full proposal, uh, this, is, this, this has been just a kind of a chosen to be uh, one of the short list. So there is a still competition, but uh, sooner or later we are going to uh, win uh, this one and, and just to uh, get some support. But uh, the real support is from uh, the lecturers. Currently, I am uh, the and I and Professor Min Sok So are organizing, coordinating the uh, entire contents from our domestic colleagues or our hospital ones. But uh, very soon, or sooner or later, uh, we are happy to include uh, one of you. If you are comfortable to say something, then uh, then why don't we just make a kind of uh, uh, lecture online? from Asian, uh, the experts, and also uh, the participants are going to be the next generation of the Asian countries for NM and science, you know? And so after uh, the next semester's uh, lecture series, in winter, we are going to have a, uh, the uh, brain pad and uh, the, the instrumentation and also uh, something more. Uh, by Professor Jason Lee. Uh, that's a winter meeting. And um, this uh, uh, TAIN, uh, Trans Eurasian, in, uh, Trans -Eurasian Information Network, TAIN project supported by European Commission or European Union is supporting a little bit of, of amount of the kind of a motive, uh, the support, uh, but uh, real uh, the support is from the lecturers. I, I would like to emphasize that. And you are more than Lisbon to become the next uh, or next to the next uh, lecturer. So please do uh, your research and your clinical researches, uh, the honestly and sincerely, and then uh, just to kind of make a make a proposal to Professor Ho. Professor Ho is the coordinator. Why? Because uh, he is one of the uh, FANMP, Fellow of Asian Nuclear Medicine Board. And uh, probably uh, you'd be uh, one of the ones of the uh, FANMB and also uh, or uh, FANMB in the, uh, the very near future. Okay, Professor Sao again. Hey, everyone, thank you very much for the participation. And I think this might be the real end. And we hope to see you again in good health. And just before, like if you can give us some comments and uh, feedback, I think it will be thankful and we might uh, come up with better content. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Once.